Hey, this is Patrick Sullivan. Welcome to my shop. Like many people, my shop is filled with chaos and clutter. It's terribly easy to misplace things. Or for things to hide. It all depends on your point of view. I don't see why I always have to be to blame. I don't think I had this problem when I was in my 20s. Back then, my tool collection was much smaller, and evidently my brain was larger. Now, I keep having these little conversations with myself. How could it just disappear? I set it down right here, not more than 10 minutes ago. The problem is actually bigger than just having a tool hide under some workshop clutter. If small items like drill bits become shrouded with sawdust and shavings, they can be easily swept into the garbage or sucked up in the shop vac. You never know how much stuff you lose that way. Sharp tools that are poorly seen can be knocked onto the floor where they inevitably land, you know, on their points or cutting edges. I don't even want to talk about what happens to precision tools like calipers when they hit the concrete. But the biggest issue is the waste of time. I can easily spend more time looking for misplaced tools than I actually spend shaping wood. A few years ago, I finally recognized that the solution is this. Just don't set small tools down on the work surface, at least not for more than a few seconds. Instead, I built a small unit that simultaneously stores and displays all the small tools that I use on a regular basis. A key feature is that this display case is easily portable. I move this unit around so that it's in easy arm's reach of my current project. Pluck out a tool when I need it, and then put it back immediately in its assigned place. It's fast, easy, and efficient. Think of it like a holster or a quiver or a scabbard, which makes a weapon immediately available when you need it. I built such a tool center about six years ago. It was largely a success, but it eventually became overcrowded as I found other tools that really needed to be added. I decided to build version 2.0, with improvements for all the obvious deficiencies that I was blind to when I built version 1. There are two parts to every project, designing it and then building it. Now, building this tool holder is fairly straightforward. The challenge is the design. If you think you can get away with just finding a block of wood and drilling a few generic holes in it, you will be keenly disappointed. Let's talk about the design process. First, you have to decide what tools merit a spot in this prime time location. The right answers depend on the type of work that you do most of the time. I'll show you what tools I chose and why. Well, obviously, pencils and pens. I use several wood pencils because they draw a much finer line when freshly sharpened, and the point is stronger than a mechanical pencil. However, there are jobs where mechanical pencils shine. I also have a white pencil for marking on dark woods and some fine point felt tip pens, which are essential for marking metal, tape, plastic, and painted surfaces. Oh, and a fat Sharpie, too. I also mark cut lines with knives and marking gauges. These are more accurate than pencils. Several that I am showing here are the most compact and handy, although I have several more hiding somewhere. I also have a carbide scribe for marking metal and plastics. Small reference squares are really handy, and I have several sizes. I also use adjustable squares all the time, and have several of them in different sizes. The beauty of them is that you can lock in a measurement and then repeat it exactly over and over. Of course, I need measuring tools. I use a regular tape measure for long measurements, but I prefer metal rulers for small measurements and, of course, for drawing straight lines. I didn't discover the 6-inch or 15-centimeter ruler until about 15 years ago, but now it's the most used straight edge that I own. However, the real measuring workhorse in my shop is the digital caliper. You can now get decent quality digital calipers at very modest prices. I use my calipers for everything. For instance, they're great for finding and marking center lines. I have trouble seeing the sizes marked on small drill bits, so I check the size of every bit with my calipers. I use them to set my table saw and band saw. I measure depths with them. In fact, my calipers are in such constant use that I recently bought a second one. I print paper patterns from my computer whenever I can. I paste the pattern directly on the wood and then cut and drill exactly along the computer-generated lines. I keep a pair of scissors for cutting out these patterns and a stick of paste immediately at hand. The paste is way better than white or yellow glue because it does not penetrate into the wood 
allowing the pattern to be scraped off in seconds without sanding. I have a wonderful small utility saw that I made from a damaged Japanese dovetail saw. It has proven to be an extremely fast and handy way to cut or trim small pieces. No noise, no dust. It's both faster and safer than power tools. But the tiny razor sharp teeth have to be kept safe. While I'm at it, I make a home for two other small trim saws. When I need a small file or a rasp, I usually turn to this set of diamond coated files. They range from 60 grit all the way up to 600 grit. They work on wood, metal, and plastic. They're inexpensive, very handy, and very versatile. My drill press is located right next to my main work table, so a set of general purpose drill bits deserves a place in this fast access tool center. I have lots of other bits, big forstners and long augers for instance, that don't get a spot because they're just too bulky or less frequently used. I use flathead screws to assemble many projects, and so I love these tapered adjustable bits with a built-in countersink. They're in constant use. I have several sizes. I use an awl to mark and start most holes in wood. I use a center punch to index most holes in metal. I've got a couple of those. I keep a very small carbide chisel and a small carving knife, both homemade, for dozens of small trim jobs like cleaning out corners, enlarging openings, etc. Also, there are some small tools that don't really get used that often. However, they need a home, and you probably know how I feel about homeless tools. This is a safe place where they remain easily visible instead of falling to the bottom of a drawer under a layer of much larger tools. Now let's figure out a layout. Obviously, the tall boys should stand in the back row of the class picture. My tall boys are my saws, my long awl, my longer rulers, and my marking gauge. My digital calipers need a lot of protection, so they also get back row spots where they can be buried deeply in the wood. The middle row is dominated by drill bits, scissors, a glue stick, and tri-squares, plus a few other longer tools. The front row is just a catch-all for a whole variety of miscellaneous short kids. Whatever you do, don't just start drilling holes willy-nilly. Measure the size of each item and make the hole enough larger that the piece drops in place easily. Remember, you want to make it effortless to put tools away. The spacing of the holes and slots is quite important. Some test cuts in MDF scrap can help you get it right. For my tri-squares, spacing the slots one half inch or 13 millimeters apart is just too close. Three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters is the minimum from my point of view. Maybe you'd be happier with even more space. Pencils and pens are in and out of their holes constantly. This spacing is just too tight for fast access. I need room for my fat fingers. I wanted to keep this fixture small enough that it did not pick up too much valuable table space, and light enough that it could be easily slid or carried to another location as needed. This one's 23 inches wide or about 60 centimeters, and it seems about right. Now let's get to the construction. I built this latest version from redwood, but any relatively light softwood will work. The backbone of the fixture is a piece 6.25 inches or 16 centimeters tall. I had to glue up two pieces to get that dimension. At the back of this, I glued a thin panel separated from the backbone by narrow strips to create slots to house my saws and rulers. Below the panel is a strip of wood that forms a bottom for the slots. The middle row is 4.25 inches or 12 centimeters tall. This row also contains a recess for a set of drill bits, which I will show you in just a minute. The front row is 2.75 inches or 7 centimeters tall, and this seems to me to be a pretty good height for a variety of miscellaneous tools. This tool center has spaces for 125 individual tools, not counting the drill set. I drilled more than 100 holes. It's a lot easier to drill them before you glue all the parts together. Now some of these holes need to be deepened. I started all the holes with my drill press, and then I used a longer bit in my portable drill for any of those that needed to be deepened. To keep my digital calipers securely oriented, I drilled the smaller hole that you can see here, and then cut away a little of the wood between them with small chisels. 
This shallow recess captures the fine adjustment thumb screw and prevents the sharp jaws from rotating and bumping into adjacent tool handles. Now let me take you on a little detour for a minute. I bought an economy set of drills from Harbor Freight. These make no pretense of being super high quality. However, they're an extremely good value for general utility work. They came in a fairly rugged case, which would be very useful if I were a tradesman who needed to transport them to a job site every day. Since I don't, I dismantled the traveling case so I could isolate the three yellow bit holders. I cut away the protrusions from the side to make them skinnier. Now I have handy and compact holders for all the bits. In designing the fixture, I created a space where the three plastic bit holders could fit. Spacers adjust the vertical height, and the bit holders just drop into the recess so that they can be removed as necessary. Next, I cut slots, which house a number of bladed tools. I carefully adjusted the blade height of my saw so each tool would have about the right amount of space. I want to test the fit of things like these scissors right now while it's easy to make adjustments. Two of the slots are quite a bit deeper than the others, so I cut matching kerfs in the thinner board. Then I glued the two boards together. Several of the slots need to be plugged at the bottom. I cut some thin strips from a piece of scrap and anchored them with a dab of glue. They're not really under any stress at all and they're not visible. Before doing any further assembly, I planed the tops of each component to remove any layout marks and to clean up the edges of the drill holes. Finally, I marked out the locations of the spacer strips that hold the thin back panel, creating slots for my saws and long rulers. Glue the strips onto the panel first. Later, when those strips can't move, we'll glue this whole unit to the backbone. One of the saws needs a special bottom so that it will sit straight. Note that we need a bottom for several of these slots, so I simply cut the back panel a little less tall than the backbone and added a small strip of wood under the panel to prevent rulers and saws from falling out when the case is moved. Okay, it's time to glue the individual pieces together. First, glue the front row to the middle row, being sure to keep the resulting pieces square to the table. When the glue is set, I glued the small strip which supports the drill set to the middle row and then immediately glued the backbone on to complete the main assembly. These glue joints will not be under much stress, so it's not necessary to do a meticulous job. Clamp and let it cure. I made two handles which make it much easier to pick the fixture up and move it across the shop. To shape the handle stock, I cut away enough wood from a rectangular nearly square strip to give it a roughly L-shaped profile. I then used a half inch or 13 millimeter core box bit to create a smooth round recess, adjusting it both up and down and side to side. A larger bit would have been convenient, but I didn't have one that fit this router. When I had a shape that felt right, I cut the handles to length and simply glued them to the sides of the case. Finally, I made a holder for two tape measures. First, I bought the cheapest stainless steel spatula that I could find at a discount store. It actually cost one US dollar. I cut the blade into two pieces using an angle grinder because stainless is hard on hacksaw blades. I smoothed the edges and drilled four mounting holes in each piece. Next, I glued two strips of hardwood on the ends of the case above the handles. 
I then screwed the stainless plates into the strips using screws long enough to penetrate into the backbone of the fixture. And here it is in action. This fast access tool center has been a huge success for me personally. I really like it and I hope some of you will too. I'm going to stop short of promising that it'll turn your life around and fix your marriage, but at least you'll find that it is a fun project and will get you thinking about the small tools that are at the heart of your work. I know many of you will ask, so I'll put links for some of the tools that I use in the description below. I don't think full-scale plans make sense, but I will post pictures with the dimensions of my build on my website, and the link to that website is in the description below. Thanks for watching.